So here we are with Killdozer again. Right. I've ground off that shitty hasp that they had going across there for the farm gate or whatever it was. And uh, realign the door by just simply undoing the nuts and bolts, aligning the door and doing up the nuts and bolts tight. They're 8.8 HT bolts so you can do them like bloody tight. They've got captive washers on the back of the nuts. Door works fine, seal works fine. But in haste they've pulled that out to redesign the door. Um, farm special. And um, yeah, so we have to get another one of those. Went down the uh, bunghole hardware and um, they are exceedingly useful and unhelpful. Um, and so um, we'll have to find one somewhere else. Um, the problem is that um, too much water gets inside this unit and uh, essentially rains inside and fills it up with water um, in the bottom here, uh, which isn't too good for the electrics because a few bit of it's sort of hanging out with, aside from those waterproof plugs, we've got a whole series of relays down the back there. I don't know if you can see that. This is a really poor low light camera actually. Fuses there as well. So, yeah, the problem is, is that um, Chonky Town, this uh, whole console is bolted on by these bolts and it's got a seal across the top here. So the bolts all come loose and um, this falls apart and then you've got a big gap in here so it's been raining down inside the box all over the electrics. So what I've done here is um, undone the bolts, put some green Loctite on it to uh, fill up the slots that'll set solid inside and then um, clamp the box back on, bring it back together, Sikaplex inside, load space washers there, thick ones on the top and bolted it up again. Now inside, underneath we've got a hole in there which obviously water is probably going to come in there so I think it needs a bit of a, a down tube to at least come down but it has to have some venting so that this box does get water in it can dry out. Uh, it'll seal up the sides where that Sikaplex is in. But unfortunately the glow plug thing has got a so you probably see daylight up there somewhere but it's got a hole in the top and it'll rain water in there and it'll come out there and run straight down the computer which it probably does um, and you know we're just trying to eradicate water inside this thing second thing is the remote box which operates the remote control radio RF box that was bolted onto the steel side here now I found that any kind of percussion which is belting on it on this box causes it to connect or disconnect uh, and I've found um, that it's not antenna related, that it's not really pin related either. Um, we've gone through all that and um, pulled it apart actually because it just slots out of the box on the PCB. Everything's clean on the PCB, no dodgy solders or anything, but it does have a relay in there and the relay would be subject to vibration. I don't think that's meant to be solid and mounted on the, to the metal side of there in this machine, which has massive vibrations. So what I did is tested that by enclosing it in some foam and just laying it down and uh, didn't disconnect and behaves itself and it's got some status lights on the front here that actually indicate whether it's power's on, connecting, it's uh, flashing when it's connecting or solid when it's uh, second light, it's solid when it's actually connected. It does a, a flash when it starts, a low flash when it actually connects and you've got connection on the screen of the remote and then when you press the one, two, three button, which comes up on the third light, um, then the second light goes to a steady state, indicating you've got connection with the unit, and it'll drive. Uh, and it maintained that, driving it all around, doing a good, a good rear up with the uh, cutter running, but not in the log yet. But what I want to do for now is just, this is supposed to be where the remote goes in this box, but you wouldn't put it in there. To travel, it just keeps it in the truck. I want to uh, put some foam down here, some nice soft foam and for the moment just lay this down in it and see if we can insulate that and the wires off there and keep the vibration out of that radio box. It has tolerated it for a fair amount of time but obviously it's causing it a problem now. I would say it's that relay inside there which could be swapped on there, it's only a little standard uh, telephone class sort of relay. Um, but the box, um, yeah, um, 
It's um, being down the foam there might not be ideal. Um, we really do want to bolt it on somewhere. Um, some rubberized mounts there would be okay, but this box um, is obviously um, prone to the vibration and drop out. So at the moment we're just going to have to leave it in foam until he either buys a new box or we decide to swap the relay and try it out. Um, at this stage you don't want to solder anything on that board, so we'll just put it in the foam for the moment. Stopping water leaking up and filling it up inside the box here and raining all over the electrics. And we'll just tie this back. This is seriously... There's a harness there that goes to the radio box around the back of the main computer. It comes to here. It's got a single plug running into here. There's a third black wire, which is a shield wire, it appears to be. There's this two-way plug that comes to here, a two-way plug. This cable is... <coughs> that means it doesn't move. That attaches to that lever, which unlocks the... Open the bastardly foot. Unlocks the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, I'd try and lubricate that cable, but I don't know how the hell I'm going to release it. It actually goes up to this. So, man, that's jammed. Got a cable lube block, fits over there and over there, seals, put a little rod in and squirt CRC up through the cable. Everything motorcycle cables. If we can get a little bit in there, we can probably get that moving, um, but that's uh, broke off the end, so yeah, it's kind of, <laughs> I think we need to get a new cable and it'll probably come with another clevis on the, ta oh, clevis on the cable anyway. Alright, that's it for Killdozer today. Just lost contact again. Same thing. So this is flashing. Your cutting wheel, man. Something to do with your cutting wheel and your clutch. Let's we'll start it again. Fucking light, mate. The cutting wheel light. Yeah, it says here disengaged. Disengaged. Yeah, might be a harness up the front there. Before you disengage, okay. Before you disengage, throttle down before you hit disengage. Just to see if it engage it again. Goes out sometimes, it just didn't seem that bad. Yeah. That bad. Pressure re engage. Alright. Oh, oh, uh, it's locked you out, man. Alright. Uh, Bolt two. Okay. Bolt two. Alright, it's 
flashing with a disengage. The flash, because it's disengaged you yeah. for some reason. I don't know if that's actually a machine fault. Anyway, we'll turn it off. Leave it on, leave it on. Over loads like that, it, but it did say fault too, so I'm going to have a look at that. We need to get the servicing paper that one. Yeah.